Hey everyone, welcome back to Geet Builds. I am Geet, and today we're finally sailing back to Keysol. In today's update, we're going to be building up the peninsulas on both sides of the city, as well as the docks, ships, lighthouse, and naval fort right outside the bay. It's been a while since the last Keysol video, so here's a quick overview of where we left off last time. On the cliffs you can see the rows of residential and government buildings, and directly beneath that is the main city square with the original seahorse statue as its centerpiece. A little to the right of that is the canal leading to the aqueduct lift system that towers above the city, lifting cargo and people directly from sea level all the way up to the tops of the cliffs. At the right edge of Keysol is the University District, with the brownstone buildings of the college below and the ancient library towers above it. Back over to the left side of the city is a shipwright in the middle of constructing a ship, and the military academy and citadel climbing up the cliff as well. So I ended the last Keysol video with the waterfront section of the main city unfinished. Before moving on to the peninsulas, I thought it would make the most sense to complete this portion and then move outwards. So I started by getting the rough shape of the docks and piers down in orange wool and then sculpting detail into it afterwards. Originally, I'd wanted to incorporate the white cliffs into the docks more, but the cliffs next to the water were just too low for that to really be an option. With the shape of the docks looking how I wanted them to, I replaced the orange with a stone brick pattern and then finished the different stairways leading up into the city. I added a railing around the area before building a wooden stone pier jutting into the water where the ships could dock. I'd never actually built a ship in Minecraft before this, but it was one of the things I was looking forward to most when I started Keysaw. The first couple ships I built over here are a little rough in their design, but I was happy enough with how they turned out to include them in the city. By the end of the video, I was able to create massive warships that I'm super happy with now, and in the future I'm excited to plan builds with ships included in them, because making them was some of the most fun I had in creating Keysaw. I made three different ships for this section of the docks. Since these were close to the main city square and a lot of residential buildings, it made sense in my mind that these would be private vessels owned by the ruling class of Keysol. With that in mind, I made the ships a lot smaller than the cargo and warships I would build later, and used bright colors to decorate the hulls and sails. With the ships done and placed, I finished the docks with some final details and added a small drawbridge across the canal to connect this dock with the other half of the city. With the first dock area done, I moved over to the peninsula on the left side of Keysol. Again, the cliffs on the waterfront were just a little bit too low for what I wanted, and the grassy area on top was more narrow and rough than I'd originally intended. So I totally transformed it, adding a bit of height overall and gaining a huge amount of area to build on. I wanted the overall feel of this area to be more for the masses, where the working class of Kisol would live. It would be a little more chaotic in its structure than the first section of the city, and there'd be a lot of different levels and paths between those levels to make everything interconnected in a way that felt unplanned and organic. So on the side of the new harbor walls, I added wooden walkways inspired by Riften and Skyrim, hovering over each other, with exposed fences supporting them to make it all feel a bit rickety. The cliffside portion of Keysol was facing directly outwards towards the ocean, which meant that all the buildings had to be flat and looking in the same direction to have the best view. But since this section is jutting out into the sea, I can make the buildings have different angles and even curve around in a semicircle in a later section, which also adds to the feeling of the whole area being organically made. Since the area is a working class district, I thought adding a bit of bread and circus could fit the vibe, as well as create unique points of interest throughout the city. So right outside one of the main gates of the central city, I created a festival area. There's one main tent with a raised stage across from it for musicians and other performers, surrounded by vendor stalls and drinking halls throughout the streets nearby. Having all the different festival tents also let me make Keysaw more colorful, using blocks like crimson planks, watermelons, red nether bricks, and warped fungus and stems that I don't usually get the chance to use. I finished up the street with a well and a few covered doorways to crowd the street in a bit more. At the far end of the street, I also built a coliseum very loosely inspired by the arenas that Roman chariot racing would take place in. The outer walls are a double layer of arches running up as supports, with a decorative layer of arches on top as well, with four massive doors leading inside. On the inside, there's raised tiers for benches surrounding a racing track made out of grass paths. The arena is fairly large compared to the surrounding buildings, and adds a cool effect to the shape of Keysaw when looking from above. The area around it ends up being busy and crowded, but since the arena is mostly open space in the middle, there's this really defined contrast between it and the surrounding buildings. It's similar to how the canal and aqueduct from the first video creates a clean break between the two sides of the cliffside district, and I think it makes Keysaw a lot more interesting to look at. After finishing the arena, I can move on to the rest of the peninsula. Again, I started by building out the perimeter of the area, wrapping the small wooden dock around and adding two more layers of walkways above it. I copy and pasted the customs building from the first dock area, as well as a crane onto a section of the dock that extends from the rest of the peninsula, then pasted a modified fishing boat nearby too. With the docks and walkways made, I started building the merchant ship that would sit next to the crane. It's a bit bigger than the first three ships, since it's meant to carry a lot more cargo and venture into deeper waters. The ship has three tiers of main decks, with two hatches for moving cargo into the hold. 
Since the merchant ship's larger than the earlier ones, a three-mast design fit a lot better on this than the two master brigs those had. With the ship done, I pasted it down onto the water next to the crane, and moved on to the opposite edge of the area. I reused the circular tower design from the last video, placing it in a few different spots along the outer edge before connecting the towers with a wall. The ground outside the wall is lower than the inner platform, so from the outside the wall looks pretty tall, but you can still get a good view of the buildings within this section of the city. Inside the walls, I made a row of buildings wrapping around the arena, which created a pretty narrow back alley. I varied the colors for each of the buildings along the row to keep everything from looking the same. On the other side of the arena, there's a ton of open space. I started filling it in with a few more houses along the walls at an angle, getting the basic floor plan along the wall, but then building out in the open just to make it easier to work. I made the one building entirely with wool first, and then replaced it with two different color palettes to create two different looking buildings from the one design. Looking around the rest of the platform, I started to feel like the whole area was too flat, which I wasn't personally a huge fan of. So in the middle of the peninsula, I made two sections of raised platforms to build a row of buildings on, with an end that curves around and has a stone tower reaching up above the surrounding buildings. Between the two platforms, I dug a narrow street down into the ground, with stairs leading down at the front end and leading into a tunnel at the far end. In the walls, I added recessed doors leading into seedy looking underground shops and inns. Above the tunnel at the end of the street, I added a large four-story building that the tunnel runs under. And at the entrance of the alley, I built an L-shaped row of houses that dissects the area, which creates a few different paths leading into each other to make the streets feel complex and interconnected. With most of the buildings placed, it made sense to start filling in the smaller details to make the city feel lived in. I started working on a marketplace that would be centered around a large oak tree that adds some greenery to what is so far a pretty urban area. Some of the market stalls are right on the street, but I tried to vary the levels a bit by making raised wooden platforms that some of the merchants would be set up on. I also built a live fish market recessed into the ground, with tanks of water made of trap doors holding different kinds of fish with name tags on them to prevent despawning. I used item frames in the markets with different plants set in them, as well as potted plants and sea cucumbers to create a produce market around the tree. I saved the section of the peninsula at the end for last, because I had some idea of what I wanted to do with it, but nothing concrete. I knew there needed to be a way to get from the left peninsula to the right without going throughout the entire main city, but I wasn't sure if the two sides would be connected with something like a ferry, a gondola system, or a bridge. I settled with a bridge, since I thought it would make the most sense for transporting a large number of people and goods, but since large ships needed to travel in and out of the harbor, I decided there would also need to be a drawbridge. The bridge itself is made on a slight angle, and also gradually inclines up towards the center, which made planning it pretty tricky and took a few tries. For stability, the bridge has arches reinforcing each half, ending in a huge tower structure on both sides to support the weight of raising and lowering the massive wooden drawbridge segments. These segments are attached to a beam, spanning the gap between the towers, which means that the wooden bridge doesn't need to be lifted to the top of the towers, just to the beam, which I thought made the physics of it work better. To finish up this section, I added a small park with a few ponds and a covered sitting area. With this peninsula completed, I'm going to do a quick tour around to get a better up-close view of the finished streets and buildings. There's still a lot more building to be done in this video, but I'm going to use this tour section to talk a little bit about some outside stuff. So I usually don't post maps for download until they're completely entirely done, but by the end of this video, so much of Keysaw is complete that I'm going to go ahead and put it up for download on Planet Minecraft. The only thing that hasn't been completed yet is the palace or castle, I haven't really decided which yet, um, at the top of the cliffs. But I'm going to take another break from Keysaw before finishing that and why do you ought to be able to explore the city yourselves, since I think that's really the best way to experience all the details that I put into Keysaw. For my next projects, I'm going to be bringing back the subscriber giveaway that I used to do, but changed it up just a little bit. So I used to do it by having people comment if they wanted to be entered into the giveaway, and then reaching out to them if they win. And it was kind of an inefficient way to do it, and I think I want a little more creative control than the old system used to give me. Uh, but from here on out, I'm going to have an email they can send your map ideas to, and then from there I'll choose which maps to make for the giveaway, or might even do like a community poll where everyone can vote on them. So the account email will be geekbuildsgiveaway at gmail.com, and I'll have that in the description as well as the about section of my YouTube page. But if you want to win and have your map made for a video, just email me your idea, and if you've got like concept art or pictures to help me get a vibe for the build, you can include that too. Um, I'm probably going to be sticking with like the fantasy or the medieval style that I've usually been making, uh, but if you have an idea that's a bit outside of that, you can email me that too, and I might change it up and do uh, a little bit of a weird map from time to time as well. So to get back to the build, I started out again by working on the docks and piers and then building inland. You can also see that I did a better job over here of incorporating the cliffs into the docks like I originally intended. Since Keysaw is primarily a naval power, they need more than just one shipwright, so I copy and pasted the shipyard over here but changed the coloring on the ship being made. This is also the side of Keysaw with a heavier focus on producing things, so I built a barge with these big storage barrels on it that's meant to just move goods throughout the harbor. 
I also made a guard tower to watch out over the docks, and a few cannons pointed out towards the entrance of the harbor for defense. I added another smaller defensive wall outside the main gate, since I'm going to be transforming this peninsula into farmland with only a low, stacked stone wall on the outer edge, so it wouldn't be as hard, compared to the other peninsula, for invading armies to beach their ships on the shore and get to this gate. Next, I turn the coastline on the inside of the harbor into a flat platform to build on later, then add a more chaotic network of wood docks and piers jutting into the water. They're a bit smaller than the docks that are around the rest of the harbor, since the boats I build here are fishing vessels that won't be venturing out too far into the open ocean. I use world edit to quickly build up the stack stone wall, then create a small, circular tower with cannons facing out towards the sea at the top, and then paste them along the wall. They're not complex in their design, but using wall blocks along the edge allows the towers to have a gentle slope upwards towards the top, inspired by naval forts that were built throughout the Caribbean. Back over to the docks, I take the guard tower from earlier and paste that here, as well as building another small stone customs building where fishermen can declare their catch. I get to work next on the buildings that line the docks, which are made almost entirely of wood to reflect the more modest incomes of the fishermen and farmers that live in this area. I did a bit of terraforming on a section of the land that I didn't think would be great for building next to, and turned it into a retaining wall that will have farmland above it. I went back through the stone area and added some irregular wood beams along the ground to really enforce the idea that this section of Keysaw is a bit more thrown together than the rest. At the end of the docks near the bridge, I make a circular building that's intended to be a fisherman's guild hall. With all the structures and buildings in the dock area finished, I go back through and start adding old sails that have been repurposed as tarps to add a bit of cover over the street. It felt like the people that lived here would be crafty with the resources they have, and also emphasizes just how important sailing is to the people of Keysaw. The last part of this section of the docks that I built were the boats, which are small and made of plain, undecorated wood with a single mast. I moved on from the docks to the grassy area of the peninsula. Instead of flattening the land like I did on the other peninsula, I left the slopes and hills as they were to give the farms better texture. I separated everything into smaller plots of farmland so different crops could be grown and rotated through from season to season. I built a windmill with some pretty big blades sticking out, along with a barn and an exposed wood beam shed for storing tools and harvested crops. I took those schematics and pasted them a few more times within the different fields I made. Between the crop fields, I also planted a couple fields of roses, sunflowers, and cornflowers to add some different bright colors around this area. So with all that done, both of the peninsulas were finished. Before moving on to the lighthouse, warships, and naval fort, I'll do a quick tour to get a better up-close view of this side of Keysaw. It didn't feel natural that there was just one path leading to the farm and dock area, so I dug out this tunnel running under the shipwright to connect the docks together. One thing I really like about this area is how different it feels from the rest of Keysaw. It feels the most connected to the harbor, since the street and buildings here are basically at sea level. And I'm a big fan of how the wooden docks turned out, since they're unorganized and connect in weird ways that feels realistic for a smaller fishing area. For the fields, I tried to vary what was being grown and at what stage they're in. So over on the right, there's a field of wheat being harvested, and at the tip of the peninsula, there's a wheat field still growing. There's also a vineyard, and further down, a field of growing beets. I wish there were other crops in Minecraft, like wheat, that are taller and more visible, but having fields of roses and sunflowers let me diversify Keysaw's farming economy so they're not just growing food. So with all this done, it was time to move outside the harbor and work on the lighthouse. So the lighthouse complex is built on two separate islands, close together and surrounded by rocky protrusions sticking out of the water. The lower island is where the dock and lighthouse keeper's living quarters are, and the raised island is where the lighthouse itself is. They're connected by a hanging wooden bridge and a set of steep stairs running up the cliffs. It's sort of hard to see with how sped up the time lapse is, but inside the light at the top, there's actually a redstone repeater that makes the light spin in a circle. Over to the naval fort, I started out by building the layout in orange to get a clear view of where the walls would be. The top is all roughly the same height, but a couple of the towers are slightly taller than the rest just for a little variation. After that, I built three dock areas, with stairs leading up to the gates of the fort. With the rough shape of the fort down, I went back through and added finishing details like crenellations and arches and then hollowing out some of the walls for areas that could be used for storing gunpowder, cannonballs, and other materials the fort would need. I replaced the orange and red with their final textures, and then placed two different cannon schematics along the walls that are facing out towards the ocean. Inside the walls, the main building of the fort is a rectangle with towers at the corners and in the middle of the longer sides. With the structure done, I add cannons to the top, and go back along the ground to add paths connecting everything together. With the fort completed, all of the buildings in Keysaw were done. The last thing to build in this video are the warships, which is the part that I was personally most excited for. I started out with the smaller of the two warship designs, which is modeled after an 18th century galleon. The decks have a lot of height variation between them, with the main deck being the lowest point. Each side has four cannons in the hull and another two cannons on the deck. For the sails, I tried to be realistic, but was a bit limited on space, so I included the foremast, mainmast, and mizzenmast 
but simplified the rigging a lot so that everything looks proportional. I copied the design and placed the ship in a few different spots docked around the naval fort, switching between the dark red color and a deep blue as well. The second ship is modeled after a first-rate ship of the line, so it's a lot bigger than the first one, with three gun decks and a rigging that's a lot closer to reality. I went with a few different color schemes for the hull, but settled with the one you see here. I extend the gallery at the back of the ship out a bit and add some windows and details on the outside to make it more interesting to look at. For the guns, there's 34 on each side for a total of 68. The sails on this ship were a fun challenge. Each of the masts has three distinct sails, with two jibs out front and two stay sails between the masts as well. To make the sails seem more dynamic, I play with the angles a lot to make it appear that they're being filled by the wind and etch out a curve at the back of the sails to make it look like there's tension being created by the ropes attaching them to the ship. I attach the masts and yards to each other with fences made to resemble rope and redo all the square sails so they look like they're hanging down from where they're attached. I'm really happy with the final look of the ship of the line and I think it's one of the highlights of this section of Keysaw. I placed the design in a few different places, changing the color of one of the ships to a dark green and black to add some variety between them. And with the ship of the line finished and pasted around the map, building for this update was basically done. I copied a few of the smaller ships and pasted them around the harbor to add a bit of motion to the build, but that's going to be it for this update. Keysaw has been such a huge project so far. I think I've sunk around like 160 hours or so into the building process, but I think the effort shows and it definitely feels like my most comprehensive project. So if you've made it this far, feel free to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The link to the Planet Minecraft page where you can download Keysaw will be in the description, as well as a link to my Instagram and Discord server. The rest of the video will be exploring a few more areas that I didn't get to show earlier. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.